One of the other things that we should probably consider whenever working with a topology brush is the ability to edit our pre-existing topology with our curve lines. So if we shoot over to our brush over here and uh, click on topology, you can see what I ended up doing is creating kind of like all these extra curve lines um, for one half of our pair of jeans over here. And I've obviously used the other uh, topology brush to do that. Now, the problem that we're faced with is the fact that we can't actually manipulate or edit these individual vertices. So all these extra little green circles that we have here, unless we actually delete that by holding down Alt and sort of getting rid of them and redrawing them, um, we can't actually move them on the actual surface. Now, the way curve lines usually work is that they have a bend function that allows us to sort of jump in here and start manipulating the actual curves. Let me show you what I mean. If I go over to brushes over here and select something like the uh, curve tube, make your brush size a little bit smaller and draw out this, uh, this curve tube line, um, we have the ability to manipulate that line and manipulate that tube any which way we want. And the reason we could actually do that is because of a button with inside stroke. So if we go to stroke and go to curve, you'll notice that there's a button inside curve called bend. And it's this bend button that allows us to do just that, it allows us to bend and manipulate our um, tube and our curve line here. Unfortunately, that functionality doesn't exist when it comes to the topology brush. Now, admittedly, we could use something like the curved tube in order to, uh, to get in really tight here and say, for instance, click on one of these curve lines and turn it into a curved tube. And we can probably manipulate that curve tube, you know, in a different way and then go back to the uh, topology brush but it doesn't exactly solve our problem. Um, all it ends up doing is sort of creating additional geometry that we have to deal with and um, it gets a little bit messy. So how do we go about manipulating and editing all this stuff? Well, probably the easiest way I would approach it is probably using the old school Z-Sphere topology method. Now it is old school and it is a little bit cumbersome, but um, nevertheless, um, it's probably the most effective way of, uh, of giving you complete control over your vertices. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and let's go to draw size and bring that down to something like one. Let's go ahead and click on our model and um, let's hold down control shift, click on the actual pair of jeans. Let's go to subtool and like we did earlier, go to split and hit split hidden. So that way we've basically separated the high resolution version of our genes with the low resolution uh, version of our genes. So let's go ahead and clear the mask and let's rename the low resolution pair. So if we hit solo and click on this pair, you can see that we've got this one half of our mesh. Now we could do a mirror and weld if we wanted to at this point. Um, and that's probably what I would recommend. Uh, so if we go to something like, uh, uh, where is it, geometry, uh, go to uh, modify topology and we've got something called mirror and weld. We can click on that and, uh, and create something like this uh, if you wanted to. At the moment, I'm not really gonna worry about that. Instead, uh, let's rename this low resolution pair of genes and call it exactly that. Genes space low res and hit enter. And so there we go. Let's go ahead and actually create a clone of this so it shows up with inside our um, tool palette because at the moment as we switch between and toggle between the other layer, all that ends up happening is that the uh, tool palette updates and shows whatever you have selected. So let's go ahead and select the jeans and hit clone. So that way we've got a copy of this inside our uh, tool palette and let's go ahead and select the actual jeans themselves. So now we've got both in there. Okay, so now let's go to Tool and let's go to Z-Sphere. And like I showed you in the uh, high to low poly tutorial series, um, we're pretty much using the same technique. So if we go all the way down to, um, where is it, rigging over here, we've got a button called Select Mesh. Now before we actually implement Select Mesh, we need to make sure that we turn off Solo. So if you've got Solo switched on, I recommend you turn that off and then go to select mesh, click on that, and then select the high resolution pair of jeans. Now, we're gonna be using the high resolution pair of jeans as our base mesh in order to um, start creating or adjusting our low resolution topology. I'll show you what I mean. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and hit uh, bind mesh. Give it a second. There we go. And then we go to topology. And inside topology, we've got a button called select topo. And what I want to do is click on that and select the low resolution pair of jeans. If 
we click on that, you could see what happens. Basically, the low resolution topology is projected on top of our high resolution model. And it's through the Z sphere that we'll actually be able to edit this. But before we do that, we need to click on edit topology. Click on that. And now suddenly everything changes color. And if we zoom into this thing, we can then go to move over here and we could actually edit these vertices. And of course you could make your brush size a bit bigger, just makes things a little bit easier for you. You could even draw new topology if you wanted to, like so. Um, I'm not going to really worry about that, so I'm just going to undo that. And instead what I'll do is, um, is shoot over to adaptive skin here, bring my density down to one and hit preview. And you can see exactly what it looks like. And of course you could hit uh, polyframe over here and examine the actual uh, topology of this piece. And uh, of course if you're, if you're game you could uh, always bring it up a few subdivision levels. And, um, and really um, what I would recommend is watching the uh, From High to Low Poly tutorial series on the Bad King website. And this will probably explain this a little bit better. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn that off. Turn off polyframe. Let's shoot back up to our tool over here and click on something like this plane 3D. And uh, let's go ahead and frame that so we can zoom into it a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn on polyframe and go to make polymesh 3D. Click on that. And while we're on the topic of editing topology, one thing that you guys should probably be aware of is the ability to actually manipulate pre-existing geometry on an already existing surface. Now, what we've managed to do so far is create new geometry. So we've gone as far as creating kind of like little cubes. We've created, you know, one half of a pair of jeans and, uh, and so forth. Now, what happens if you already have geometry that you wanted to edit? Now, say for instance, I wanted to create kind of like a circle in the center of this. And this thing is made up of, you know, little cubes or little squares absolutely everywhere. Well, if we go ahead and we pull out this mask, we use our spacebar to place it on top here. Then we hit Control W in order to create our own polygroup. We can then go ahead and zoom into this and we can create kind of like this, uh, this really cool like a uh, little, what's it called, uh, circle. And I just joined it up over there. And uh, what we can do is basically create kind of like a little bit of topology. Now I'm just going to go ahead and join that up over here. In fact, I might reset that and draw that again. So create a nice little circle like this, join it up on the end here. And uh, we can go ahead and do something like this. Now, as you can see, we've got, you know, a few triangles over here. If we go ahead and click on the actual mesh, we end up with some new geometry. Now, what I want to do is rather than creating new geometry, I want to actually edit the pre-existing geometry. So let's hit Control Z to undo that. And instead, hold down Control Shift and select this polygroup. So now we basically only have the center polygroup selected and we've got the rest of it hidden. Now, when, when you're in this mode, Watch what happens. If we go ahead and click on the actual uh, object, it basically gets the whole thing to conform to the shape of the typology that we've drawn out using the, um, the curve lines. And as you can see here, we now have these edge loops that we could add an eye or a mouth or something to. So this is really, really handy if you want to edit your pre-existing um, geometry. And if we go ahead and turn off polyframe, you could barely see that there's any difference on this surface. But when you turn on polyframe, you could see that you've made some serious changes to typology, which will give you a huge advantage, particularly when you're working with organic services. So that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers.